What's up, everybody? Um, getting into this episode of GH, I enjoyed this episode thoroughly because this was a hot ass mess. This episode was good. Listen, Sam, you can cry me a damn river at this point. She's sitting there whining to Carly. Oh, me and Jason broke up. Dada, yada, yada, yada. This heifer had the nerve to say a part of her was hoping Jason would have fought her on breaking up. See, this is... <laughs> This is why I don't like Sam. <laughs> Listen, I know some of y'all, a lot of y'all are Sam fans. I, I just, I, I don't like the chick. I don't like her. I don't like her. These little high school games that she playing. Like you sat there in that man's face. Cry to him about how his lifestyle is so dangerous to you and the kids. And how Danny, this is affecting Danny. You even threw his child in his face about how this was affecting his child. And a part of you wanted him to fight you on it. Sam, shut up. Just sh shut, shut the hell up, please. Shut up. Like, why do, I hate when people do shit like that. Don't say something that you don't really mean. Like, I don't want to hear all oh, a part of me. No, 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 no. No. Mm -mm. When you say things like that, oh, your lifestyle, we should break up because I can't put the kids at risk. When you say things like that, you need to fully mean what the hell you're saying. Don't sit there and come back a day later or the same day. Oh, a part of me. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear a part of me. When you say shit like that, you need to say all of me felt that way, not a part of me. Jason is not the type to sit here and force you to do something that you don't no longer want to do. That's why he didn't fight you. That's why. And at this point, Jason needs to move on with life. I understand him and Sam had a good ride. They had a good run. But you know what? It's over. Thank you. Moving on. I hope that is done for good. I hope so. Jason, don't go back. Because I just feel like he needs to be with somebody who's going to accept him for him. Because when you're in the mob, you're not leaving the mob. Even if deep down you want to leave the mob. And I'm pretty sure Jason had them thoughts. Like, oh, I, I need to get out this business. But he know realistically it's never going to happen. You're in. <laughs> what you're in, you're in, bruh. There is no getting out. Not unless every criminal in the world that's in the mafia die. Then maybe you have a chance of getting out. But I don't see that happening anytime soon. So... You're stuck. And Jason was real pissed about it, too. Like, he was really pissed off about the breakup. And I can't say that I blame him. He spent a long time with Sam, you know, off and on. You know, that was what? 16, 17 years they've been together? Off and on? So, I could I could understand it. Um, He just felt like he should have never had kids. Because I remember back in the day, Sonny never wanted kids because he was in the business. But, you know, shit happens. Condoms, you know, they don't work, apparently. Y'all don't like using them, and bitches be poking holes in condoms. Claudia is a car. Um, <laughs> I remember that episode. It was in April. I think it was around April, around March, April-ish. I remember when, Car when Claudia was trying to cover her ass because Jerry Jacks was leaving those little DVDs all around the place, especially around Sunny House, of... Um, Talking about Claudia's involvement in Michael shooting. So to save her ass, she tried to get Sonny to sleep with her so she can get pregnant. And you know Sonny wasn't dumb at the time. He would use condoms and all that stuff. But this witch poked holes in the condoms. I was like, bitch. <laughs> I was like, yo, that's why I fucking miss Claudia so much. That bitch was crazy. I miss her. I miss her so much. Oh my God. I miss her. Lord have mercy. <laughs> I remember that episode though. She took like a little clothespin or something like that and just like she put like four holes in that damn condom and boom, she got pregnant. I said, oh shit. 
But yeah, you know, Jason just felt like he should have never had children because, you know, he on the one hand, he knows that he could never leave the business. But two, he's not trying to put his kids at risk. But it's like you're in between a rock and a hard place because you don't want to put your kids at risk. But at the same time, you don't want to look like a deadbeat father, too. You know what I'm saying? Because let me tell you something. It would be crazy for Jason to live in the same town as his children, but never see his children. Like my father, well, excuse my my sperm donor. I don't call him a father because he's never been that. He lived. Let me tell you, he lived right in the same neighborhood as me. If I walk out of my old house and I walk to the corner of my street and I look to my left. I could see his house from the corner of my street. That's how close my father lived at the time. And yet I never seen him. He never came by my house, nothing. And I could literally go on my corner and, and see his house. And that's some crazy shit to me. How you could live right there from your child, but never see your child, never check on your child. Like I, I don't get that shit. That just baffles me to this day. Um, But you know what? Jason just gonna have to figure it out. But I still feel I agree with a lot of y'all that commented um, yesterday. I do agree. I don't really see how Jason moving out and then breaking up is still going to protect the kids because all of Jason's enemies know that. You know, Danny's his child. I'm pretty sure they know Jake is his child. Like. I remember when Carly wanted Sonny to sign away his rights to Michael and Morgan. I'm like, well, everybody, all his enemies know who his kids are. So what good is that going to do you? I just hope that, you know, if you don't want to be with the man or whatever, then I hope that y'all can still co-parent. And when Jason has the time and he gets his head out of Sonny's ass, that he will spend time with both his children, not the one child that he's claiming, I guess, at the time. Because like I said, it something did not sit right with me yesterday. It still doesn't sit right with me when Liz showed up at the penthouse looking for Jason so he can, you know, to talk to him about spending time with Jay. That did not sit right with me. I didn't like that. I didn't like that because your baby mama should not have to come to your home to get you to spend time with your child. That mm -mm, no. Mm -mm. Nope. that shit don't sit right with me. I don't like that. I don't like it. Not one little bit. Um, But anyway. <laughs> Sonny, of course, in my opinion, didn't really give no good advice. Sonny sitting there talking about, oh, you did the honorable thing. Sonny, shut the hell. Shut up, Sonny. The honorable thing would be to walk away from your children, your child. That's that's the honorable thing, Sonny. So when Mike walked away from your ass all them years ago, that was honorable. Because if, if memory serves, when Mike came back to town, Sonny gave Mike hell for years for walking out on him. So you're encouraging this foolishness? Really, Sonny? After all you went through with your daddy issues over the years and deep being your stepfather from hell and you sitting there encouraging this bullshit because there's no way Sonny would have ever walked away from his kids. He fought for his kids tooth and nail. When Carly wanted custody of Michael Morgan, he fought that. The only thing he didn't fight was Christina. That's the only, <laughs> that's the only child he didn't fight for. Like, I'm sorry for laughing at that, but, you know, because no child should be abandoned. But it's kind of funny. Because <laughs> I remember Christina brought that up, too, some years back. Like, how Sonny always put Michael and Morgan before her. Like, he fought Carly tooth and nail in court to gain access to those boys. But you did not fight for your daughter? Like, I don't know. The deadbeat is real. I'm just saying, I don't get people like that. Like, how the hell you choose one child or one set of kids over and I don't get that shit. I don't, I don't get the thought of people. One, you abandon your kids. Then, whoo we? I don't get it. I, I just don't. Anyway, moving on from that shit, because I'm, I'm about to get heated talking about this. Because y'all know I will talk about this shit the whole episode. <laughs> 
Because it's just it just baffles me. Like I don't get the thought process behind dead beats. I don't get that shit. Like if you're gonna be a deadbeat, at least pay some child support. I'm just saying. Like you can't be a deadbeat and be a broke deadbeat at the same time. Like that shit just don't go hand in hand. Now I'm like, come on, now you gotta do one or the other. Can't do both. Damn, like if you're gonna be a deadbeat, and I don't encourage anybody to be a deadbeat, but if you're gonna be a deadbeat, send some child support. I'm just saying, do that. You know, don't don't. Mm -mm. You know what my child support was? I remember this like it was yesterday. Um, it was years ago too. Probably back when I was like 13, maybe 12. I remember that child support check I got or my mother got from that sperm donor. It was for one dollar. For one dollar. I remember it. I will forever. I will go to my grave remembering that shit. That shit still sticks with me. One dollar. I remember. Oh, let me move on because I <laughs> let me move on. Cause I'm jumping off subject. Let me move on. So moving on from that. Um, so anywho, Tracy. Trace, I love my boo Tracy. I'm happy she back. But Tracy is causing some some hell right about now. Tracy is about to make Ned's situation all types of worse. So she breaks up the fight between Alexis and Olivia and basically offers Alexis a job in Amsterdam. I'm like. Amsterdam? You really think Alexis is about to move to Amsterdam? She ain't about to do that. But Alexis not stupid. She knew what Tracy was trying to do. She knew that Tracy was only offering her a job to get her out of Port Charles. So she wanted to snitch about the uh, the uh, one night stand. Um, But she assured Tracy, oh, I'm not going to say nothing. Tracy, she wasn't buying that. She said, uh-uh. Tracy said, nope, you say that shit now, but watch when you get good and drunk. And you get loose lips. Tracy was like, nah, I can't. I can't have that. <laughs> Tracy said, nah, you ain't about to fuck up my family. We already got enough drama. You ain't about to add more drama. Tracy said, no. Mm -mm. No, ma'am. But my whole thing is, as much as I love Tracy, why isn't Ned here dealing with this shit? Like, you got your mama handling your business? As grown as you are, you are damn near 60 now. Come on now. You need your mom to him. See, this is what I'm talking about. Between him and my, between him and Michael, y'all got some serious mommy issues. Cause it's like y'all can't do nothing without y'all mama, y'all aunt, whoever. It's like, damn. First you had Monica trying to clean up the mess. Now you got Tracy. I'm like, that's a damn shame. He's a grown ass man. I'm like, <laughs> clean up your own mess. Damn, how you leave? How you leave town? And leave. I mean, I'm pretty sure he didn't ask Tracy that you know clean up the mess. But you know how Tracy is. If your ass ain't here to clean it up, she gonna do it. You know that. Come on now. Um. So anyway, Tracy offers to drive Alexis home, <laughs> and while they're driving, um. So while they're driving and shit, Alexis admit she admitted to Tracy that she told Ned to confess to Olivia about the one night stand. Just tell her the truth, because if he doesn't tell her, she felt like somebody should. Once Tracy heard that, Tracy said, oh, hell no. Tracy said, uh-uh, see? She knew she couldn't trust Alexis because she knew if Alexis could sit there and say that Olivia should know and somebody should tell her if Ned not going to do it. See, that's all the confirmation Tracy needed to know that Alexis is one day going to say something. Like, she know. So, when Alexis passed out drunk, <laughs> Tracy pulled the car over and put Alexis in the driver's seat. <laughs> Tracy ain't shit. I was like, Tracy, no. Tracy pulled over and put that girl in that driver's seat. I said, no, 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 Tracy. Please don't do what I think you're about to do. Don't do this. No. Are you about to get this girl arrested for drunk driving or driving under the influence? Please don't do it. I said, Tracy, no. Tracy about to make this whole thing a hot mess right now. Tracy about to make this situation go from bad to worse. <laughs> but the shit was funny. <laughs> I love how conniving Tracy can be. Like, this chick has no type of just boundaries. Like, she just don't give a damn. Like, she just don't. She gives no fucks. And I love it. Tracy is me because that's how I feel. Like, go all with it. So, anyway... Um, 
I love the conversation between Dante and Olivia because Dante knows that he's not fit right now to take care of Rocco by himself. He knows he's not because, you know, he's missed out on so much with his son being around his son. Now, he feels like his son is a stranger to him and he's a stranger to his son. Like he probably don't even know, like his son's likes and dislikes anymore like he just he lost a little bit of time with his son you know when you're gone for an extended period of time and so much has changed it's like how do you get back into that that groove that rhythm that you had before it's kind of hard you know because it was sad to see Dante admit that he was scared to take Rocco home and stuff because clearly Dante's not there like mentally he's not there and this mind control shit and you know, the PTSD that he's still dealing with, like, you know, he's just scared that he might flare up. He might, you know, he's afraid. Um, and it's going to be hard. But, you know, I love that Olivia is still forcing him to face this. Like, she's like, no, it's time for you to take your son home and get, you know, reacclimated to your life, you know, and, and build that that that, you know, that bond back with his son. And I agree. I think he should do that. And I think it's time. Um. So anyway, moving on from that, we get back to Switzerland and Dr. Kirk pretty much tells Franco that, you know, he's still he's starting to get some of Drew's memories still in his brain and stuff. Um, but, you know, Franco was worried about turning back into Drew and stuff like that. He was worried that that might happen. I don't think that's going to happen. I think he's just getting not only his memories, but he's getting Drew's memories mixed in with his, too. Um that's why he's hearing all those voices and Peter's voice and all that stuff. Um, so I guess they just need to figure out how they're going to, you know, decipher and get through to that. But, um, mm -mm -mm, Dr. Kirk, Dr. Kirk has said enough is enough. Dr. Kirk was like, I'm going to get my payment from, um, Obrecht. He want his payment. For all his help that he's been doing for her, everything he's been doing for her, he wants to be paid in full. So he done called her into his office to get busy on the floor. <laughs> I said, oh, hell no. Sex on the floor, on a hard ass floor. I said, a queen like Obrecht? No, she deserves some good loving in the bed. Not on a little dank floor. What the hell wrong with you? Obrecht was looking at him like on the floor. She said, I ain't having no sex on no floor. <laughs> I love old break because old break said hell no she said you ain't getting none of this you know how them church people do them people you know them christian folks when they hear something nasty or dirty they be you know covering up like this that's how old break well old break said uh-uh old break said you ain't getting this cookie jar not today so you know dr kirk <laughs> dr kirk started getting mad now because he realized that you know she was playing him this whole time like she never intended on being with him she never intended on having sex with him nothing of any kind romantically with this man so now he started threatening her telling her like oh i'll call anna and tell her what you've been up to what's been going on like you know i'll tell her everything so i'm guessing that you know for all the time that Obrecht been around Helena Cassidy. She done pulled out, you know, got her little switchblade or whatever. Because, <laughs> you know, uh, Helena was known for pulling out a dagger on somebody and putting it up against their throat and threatening to slit their throat. So, you know, Obrecht kind of did the same thing. Obrecht, you know, put that dagger up against, you know, put that blade up against his throat and they started wrestling over the blade and stuff. And uh, Scott came in and he punched Dr. Kirk in the face and Dr. Kirk landed on the blade. And now Dr. Kirk is dead. I said, oh, shit, y'all gonna have to cover this up because ain't no way y'all gonna sit there and call the cops and explain this shit. That's a whole new charge because, <laughs> you know, they might not believe them. So I'm like, oh, damn. I said, y'all better cover this up quick. You know, cover, do what you do. Cover that shit up. I was laughing. Though, I'm like, oh, damn. I loved it, though. I love that little Switzerland adventure. Um, now they got a new problem to solve. So hopefully they can get that sorted. Um. So anyway, moving on from that, um, Nicholas and Ava was sitting there, you know, clinking, talking, having um, champagne. I am so happy that Nicholas and Ava decided to give they love a second chance, you know, start over and, you know, really be into this marriage for real. And he handed her the postnuptial agreement. You know, Ava, she started, you know, getting all mad and shit when he handed her that postnup. Little did she know 
he actually gave her the post nup so that way they could tear it up. They don't have to worry about it no more. It's a non-factor. I wouldn't be surprised if Nicholas had a copy of that shit somewhere though. Cause I don't believe that's the that's the I don't believe that's the original. He got to have a copy somewhere. Like I know he do. Cause Nicholas don't strike me as the type to not have some type of insurance policy. And I would hope Ava has one too. <laughs> like I'm just saying. Like y'all might be all lovey dovey now, but I wouldn't trust that shit. I'm just saying you got to have your own. So I'm not even surprised that Ryan is alive. I'm not even surprised. So Ava and Nicholas go to the damn hospital to see Ryan and she was just wishing that she would have killed his ass um, a, a long time ago. <laughs> um, Nicholas was going to suffocate Ryan <laughs> until um, Felix interrupted them and stuff. Nicholas was about to suffocate that fool. I said, oh, Nicholas really loved him some Ava. I said, OK. Um, Because Felix was telling them that Ryan wasn't waking up anytime soon. Um, and he might not remember who he is, but after they left, Ryan started moving his fingers and stuff. And that fool opened his eyes. I said, oh, hell no. But I'm not even really surprised because people like Ryan evil, evil don't die. I'm just saying. So that's a whole new problem they're going to have to deal with now. Mm -mm -mm. Ryan Chamberlain. Damn. Some people just don't know how to die correctly. I'm just saying. <laughs> um, so anyway, Julian went to go see Kim Narrow and some chick opened the door. So she told me she worked for Kim and Kim was at the hospital or whatever. And come to find out the chick that's at Kim's apartment is a nanny. Um, and a baby starts crying. I knew it. I knew it. So the baby is Kim's baby. I guess it's a baby boy or whatever. And I knew Kim ass was pregnant before she left town because when I forgot who, I think it was Elizabeth that offered that offered her a glass of wine. And Kim didn't want to drink the wine before she left. I knew she was pregnant. <laughs> and when the fire alarm went off and stuff like that and Julian left um the fire alarm in the building went off and stuff and the nanny called Kim and was like um Julian has no idea that the baby is his I said er she got pregnant by Julian I thought she was gonna get pregnant by Franco cause remember her and Franco slept together too but she was like the baby's Julian's I was like <laughs> how y'all know that we got DNA I want to see some DNA because I don't know. So Julian got no idea. He got another baby. And of course, Julian's stupid ass got caught up in the parking garage by freaking Sonny. Sonny done caught up with Julian after all. Thanks to Spinelli. Um, so Julian looks like your ass is grass. You may die not knowing that you had another child. Um, a mess. This episode was good, though. I enjoyed this. Hit the comment section. Let me know what y'all thought about this episode. I'll see y'all all later. Hope you all have a good night. Hope you have a great weekend. I'll see you all Monday. Peace.